Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Very, very interesting news with SA Rugby having officially submitted a complaint to World Rugby regarding uh, the situation that created uncontested scrums between South Africa and Australia in the second test um, in Australia between the two teams uh, where three Australian props were replaced due to injuries and HRAs which meant that uncontested scrums um, were used for the rest of the game and uh, Australia effectively had uh, an extra sort of loose forward time in that fact that they had two hookers on the field as well as a full contingent of loose forwards and uh, basically sort of took away any chance that uh, South Africa had of really using that scrum dominance. Uh, they've officially lost a complaint with World Rugby. You will now have to investigate um, the claims made by SA Rugby. Before we get into it, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Now, according to a report which came out yesterday, um, SRAB have apparently made a formal request to World Rugby to investigate the Australian injuries that led to uncontested scrums in the Rugby Championship. Basically, what happened is that during that clash in Perth a couple of weeks ago, or about almost a month ago, actually, um, there were uncontested scrums after Angus Bell and James Slipper uh, were lost to injury before Alan Alatour also um went off injured and uh, basically with angus bell and james slipper having been injured both them being loose forwards for example and then alan alato uh, who's a tight tip but probably could play a loose head as well um they were left with only one prop and neither of their uh, hookers were um sort of are trained or officially sort of uh, can play in either of the prop positions as a result there were no uncontested scrums um so as uh, basically what happened is that um Angus Bell started the game, and uh, he went off uh, during the uh, during the halftime break. And uh, James Slipper then came on and suffered an HIA. It had to be moved from the match as well. Now, in terms of uh, what happens with the the replacement, so for example, uh, a player that has been taken off can return to the field unless they are an injury replacement. A player that has been taken off and declared an injury replacement um, can therefore not um, return to the field, especially when it comes to HIAs. Now, the frustration about this is that James Slipper literally left uh, a minute after um, Oxen Chair, Malcolm Marks, um, went off for um, Jan Krobola, uh, sorry, came on for Jan Krobola and Jan Hendrik Vessels. So we kind of had unleashed, you know, the first sort of start of the bomb squad. Then James Slipper uh, went off, and as a result, we suddenly did not have um, any uh, uncontested scrums. Now, Joe Schmidt afterwards uh, spoke about the fact that um, basically said that Angus Bell probably could have continued in terms of a, if this was a Rugby World Cup final, for example, and they were so desperate to win, then they might not have declared an injury replacement. Now, What's very important about this is that he was um, termed a injury replacement. Um, you know, if he was just termed a tactical replacement, for example, or whatever, he might be able to come, he would be allowed to come back on. As soon as you turn them an injury replacement, um, and especially when it comes to HIAs, for example, then that player can, may not return. So I think that's probably an important part. So it wasn't a case of, um, you know, he was sitting on the bench and they suddenly went, oh, you know, we can send him back on, but we can't, uh, but we don't want to. They couldn't send him back on because they had to clear him an injury replacement because there was an injury. And I think, you know, probably sort of one of those long-term type things where you kind of look at the player and you think, well, he's a very important player. He's had lots of injuries before. You know, it's not worth risking him. Again, World Cup final situation, they might not term him necessarily an injury replacement, you know, given the fact that, you know, he might have been able to have continued. And uh, both uh, Alan Alta and Angus Bar actually will keep it back and play against Argentina. Now, um, uh, according to the, the article on Planet Rugby, it says that World Rugby has laws in place to penalise teams for creating a situation where uncontested scrums are necessary, but they do not come into play when HRAs come in, um, are involved. Um, and that is why, um, and therefore, Australia were able to continue the match um, as a result of it. Uh, apparently, uh, the Supreme Court are very skeptical about the validity of the Wallabies players' injuries and have made requests about the about sort of the events. Um, apparently, the report states that uh, the Supreme Court camp reviewed what occurred and decided to officially make the request through SA Rugby to World Rugby. It says it further states that Australia will now have to submit medical records to prove that all three players did have head injuries to prove their innocence in the matter, with SA Rugby effectively suggesting that it was a ploy to remove the scrums. Um, it says, while World Rugby do have independent doctors at all international matches to review head injury cases, the report states that it is the home union that appoints that doctor. Um, World Rugby, Rugby Australia and Sansa did not respond to the request apparently for comment. Um, 
Apparently, World Rugby has said that they're aware of the incident for, um, with a source from within the Open Body saying SRA Rugby has been asked for a submission um, and the working group will consider it together with any other submissions. Um, so, in terms of uh, what's going to happen, is that basically World Rugby will definitely investigate, I think, is what we uh, are sort of are getting at. The fact that a, submiss a, a submit submission has been made by SRA Rugby, World Rugby will now investigate. Now, why is this important? Now, first of all, I'm not a massive fan in terms of, of questioning the validity. I think that's a very murky road. You know, it's you know, sort of almost sort of questioning the integrity of, of team stuff like that, which I'm not a massive fan of. Um, and you don't want to be in a situation where that is the case. Uh, it obviously was a massive part of the game because of how effective the Springbok scrum can be. You know, we saw it against Ireland in that try and Loftus, for example. It's, it's, it's been one of the ma major sort of weapons of the box, and they kind of brought on two of their best scrummages in Malcolm Off. You know, Knox and Chase is one of the best scrummages in the world, and suddenly an uncontested scrum. So you understand the frustration. Now, I think the main thing about this is as long as you get the clarity, for example, and it is confirmed, for example, that there were HIAs and that this was all you know, by the book procedure and that uh, uncontested scrums were the only way it could have ended, then in theory, happy days. Um, I think the, the main thing is to make sure that this doesn't become a repeat in the future, is that we don't see other teams kind of learning from this and sort of saying, oh, so maybe we can kind of manipulate the laws um, to get to the point where you've got uncontested scrums, for example, um, to the benefit of that team who might not be able to match certain team scrums. So that's kind of the important, that's why this is a thing, um, for example, and why there is a uh, an inquiry and why it is so important for them to sort of figure this out. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see what the, if there is a formal uh, uh, address, for example, that comes from World Rugby, whether it is kind of... Uh, um, you know, acknowledged, investigated, and, and findings are released. Um, again, I'm not a massive fan of having the investigation, but again, if there is cause and there is reason for it to, to, be, to look like that, then, you know, ask the question. That is kind of the main thing. So wait and see. I wonder what you guys think. You know, is it a slippery slope with the garden to being able to do investigations? Do you think this is a very, um, is this a legitimate investigation? Do you think it's a good thing that they are asking for it? Um, again, the main thing is how do we prevent this from the future? You know, how do we get situations where we don't have uncontested scrums? Because the scrums are so important to uh, to to world rugby or to rugby union in general, and in a, in a time when um, scrums are kind of being taken away from the game to a certain degree with regards to some of the new laws, we then want to make sure that we 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 make sure we've got scrums everywhere else where we can. You know, for example, the fact that we've removed scrums from a from a free kick uh, is a bit of a for me is a bit of a crap rule. And uh, deep high scrums. Now, if we start seeing more and more uh, situations where uncontested scrums are a thing, we're going to get fewer and fewer scrums. Scrums are going to start becoming less part of the game. And that's kind of what we're trying to prevent. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.